Hi everyone, my name is Sean Levick from the Geospatial Ecology and Remote Sensing Lab. This is our environmental monitoring and modeling course. Today we're working on Lab 7, Understanding Patterns of Historical Deforestation. I'd like to acknowledge the Earth Engine developers for having developed this, these sets of scripts for exploring the Hansen dataset. Um, the Hansen dataset is, is a famous global dataset of deforestation patterns. Back in 2013, Matt Hansen published an um, important paper in science showing trends in land cover change and deforestation from 2000 to 2013. This was one of the first major global uses of Google Earth Engine for an ecological monitoring perspective. Now one of the great advantages of this uh, type of platform is that these data sets want, that rely on huge archives of imagery then get stored in the Earth Engine catalog and other researchers can make use of them. So what I mean by that is that so far we've mostly been searching say for Landsat and we have all the Landsat collection or MODIS, have the USGS and MODIS collections. But now if we search for Hansen, we'll see that we have the Hansen Global Forest Change version 1.6 2000 to 2018 um, in the catalog. So we're going to make use of this. Um, it gets updated every year. So the current version runs from 2000 to 2018. We'll explain it in more detail as we go along, but I want you to start by copying in this piece of code. What we're doing is defining a, um, a variable, global forest cover 2018, global forest change 2018 rather, and that's referencing this image um, which we looked at earlier in the catalog and zoom to a location in the world that you're interested in you can start here over Papua New Guinea and then map add layer and hit run and that'll now add the data set to our map um, at first it'll look a little strange you'll see that we just seem to have mapped the land surface in red but if you read on a bit um, it's important to note that when a multi-band image is added to a map the three first bands of the image are chosen as red green and blue respectively and stretched according to the data type your image looks red because the first three bands are tree cover in 2000 loss and gain tree cover 2000 band is expressed as a percentage having values ranging from 0 to 100 which are much higher than the loss and gain which are binary um, 0 and 1. The image therefore displays as overwhelmingly red. To understand that a bit better let's use the inspector to drill down and you'll see that this image actually has 13 bands, band 1 being tree cover in 2000, that's the way this data set is structured, bands 2 and 3 are loss and gain, band 4 is the loss year, and actually to understand all these bands a little bit better we can go back to the data set, click on it, click on this icon up here, that will load it into a new tab so that we can easily come back while we're working here, can come back and reference it here. So here we see the structure of the data set with the bands and you'll see that in addition to mapping or, or having bands for tree cover 2000 loss and gain we also have the um, red near infrared and swir bands for the first um, time step typically 2000 and the same again for the last time step, and in this case, um, 2018. 
So if we want to improve the look of our of our map, um, we need to specify that we want to actually map the tree cover band. So I'll copy in that, paste it here. See the difference now is if I just map add layer um, global forest change 2018, it plots it as an RGB image, whereas if I write it like this and sp specify that it must only plot the tree cover 2000 band. If I hit run, we'll now see these two layers in our layers tab. And here comes our, our tree cover layer. It's shown in grayscale because I haven't defined a color palette for it. Um, if we want to display a false color composite for a more recent year, 2018, then we would use the bands last B50, last B40, last B30. Just as a reminder, last B30 is the red band, last B40 is the near infrared, and last B50 is the swir. Let's see what that looks like. Run. And now we'll load up the three layers. Just a reminder if you don't want these to automatically um, show up, you can use the false command um, after the layer title. Okay, so here we have our false color composite. And just a reminder that this is a global data set. It's an amazingly powerful way of exploring forest cover and forest cover change over the entire globe. Now, one nice visualization of this data set shows forest extent in 2000 as green, forest loss as red, forest gain as blue. In order to do this, we need to make loss the first band, R, tree cover 2000 the second band, G, and gain the third band, blue. To do that, we use map add layer, global forest cover 2018, bands, loss, tree cover 2000, and gain, and we'll call that layer green. And that's because when we plot it out, you'll see that, in fact, if I turn off these other layers, everywhere where there's forest looks green. We don't see the blue and the red. But it's important to, to remember that the loss and gain bands are binary. Um, so if everything scaled from zero 255, um, the, the green is much more visible because it actually has values from 0 to 100, whereas loss and gain only have binary options of 0 or 1. If we want to view this um, in, a, in a nicer way, we need to specifically define the visualization parameters with the maximum possible values for each band. That way we can get a much better histogram stretch. So in this bit of code, we adding the same layer again, same bands, but we're specifying the maximum value for these bands. So when I do that, um, and I'm going to call this layer forest cover loss and gain. I'm going to hit run, and we'll turn off these other layers and wait for that one to come through. And here you can see that that looks much better and that we can see some clear um, differences and areas with blues and greens showing up. Now, because it's an RGB composite, we also have some pinks and oranges showing through. Orange, if you want to understand the colors a bit better, I suggest you use the inspector tool. Um, if 
for instance, if we click on a blue pixel and we're looking for the values in this last um, layer, you can see that blue, places where there's blue, we're going to have a gain value of 1 and a loss value of 0. But you'll see the tree cover is also very low. Click on an orange pixel. We'll see that orange is generally where we've had a very high cover in 2000 and we've experienced the loss. Remember in this data set, a loss is complete deforestation. Importantly, it also mentions the loss year, and that's a number of years since the start of the data set. So this would be 2009. Uh, let's find a dark red pixel which would indicate a loss from a starting point of relatively low tree cover. Here's an example in near Cape Town. If I click on that pixel, you'll see um, quite a low tree cover to start with. It's been lost. Having said that, however, please be careful that this data set is developed for forested um, areas. So it can't be applied well outside of, of, of forest landscapes. Um, moving on to the next section, these are just um, a couple of options, again, ways of visualizing this data set. And what I really like um, is this last um, script here um, before we get on to charting yearly forest loss. Um, because we, we have this issue with an RGB image in that the values are a result of the proportions of the bands um, in that pixel, it's quite hard to explicitly compare um, areas that have both gained and lost. Um, cover. So what this does, the script here, and what I'll do is I'll just, if we clear this, and just leave the line where we actually um, specify the image collection and run this. What we're doing now is creating three separate layers. So we have forest cover um, from 2000. We then have loss and we have gain. And this is quite a neat example because it also masks out non-forest areas. And this is quite well, quite scary if you look at Indonesia um, and parts of Malaysia where you can see very extensive um, loss of forest since 2000. Now, we can see that nicely in a map, but sometimes we might also want to be able to um, chart those changes over time. And I've included um, a script here for charting forest loss on a yearly basis. So this script here comes straight from the Google documentation. I've just modified it for the country Malaysia and it brings in a feature collection stored in the catalog which is a shapefile of all the countries in the world which uses um, two-letter country codes to define countries. So if we want to pull out Malaysia for example we can make a variable Malay, filter the feature collection and use the country code MY for Malaysia. Um, the script then will pull out for that particular country. We will select the loss band. And remember this is a binary um, band. And then we're going to create a variable loss area where we multiply the number of pixels um, by the pixel area. Um, loss year is the layer loss year 
and loss by year, we will use a reducer to sum and group those attributes for our region of interest. We can then print out the loss by year. We then need to do some statistical formatting. Um, it's just reworking the, the structure of those lists. And once we've done that, we can chart those values over time. So this is at the, the heavier end of the JavaScript programming for this course. I'm not going to go into the detail here. You can reuse this type of script in other data sets, but I want you to look through the code lines and understand what's happening. So this is just for an example. We'll put paste that in. Um, paste in our reformatting script and paste in our chart. Um, and if we've done, haven't made any mistakes, we should see a chart come up in our console with the yearly forest loss. And if we open that up, we'll see that we have here, this is loss of forest cover um, in square meters. We could uh, refine that to a, more, a better metric in hectares or square kilometers. And here we have a value for each year. So we can see how, um, we can see the, the pattern of deforestation over time. And this can be quite insightful um, in terms of comparing changes in forest cover with um, different policies and, and um, land management actions in different countries around the world. Of course, we don't have to use um, a country boundary. We could draw our own ROI and simply call that ROI as our and, and reduce by that ROI. Um, but this gives you an idea and also a first introduction of how we can also filter um, vector type data in Earth Engine. So this is a great resource. It's updated every year. I encourage you to explore a bit, navigate to different parts of the globe and see what interesting patterns you can find. That brings us to the end of Lab 7 in our environmental monitoring and modeling course. And my name is Sean Levick from the Geospatial Ecology and Remote Sensing Lab. Thank you.